Rescues now underway. An entire community underwater. All eyes on a key dam at this hour. Evacuations right now. Worries about a child swept away. Just as new storms are set to hit the mid-Atlantic and parts of the east. And now 10 confirmed tornadoes. Homes leveled. Also tonight, blocking the president. The Supreme Court halting the president's plan to keep 5 million undocumented immigrants from being deported. Should they stay or should they go? Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump jump in tonight. Also breaking the 25-hour standoff inside the Capitol over guns. The anger boiling over. Radical Islam! Democrats say all they want is a vote. Republicans calling it a stunt. The video from inside. The fear over terror, a gunman inside a movie theater taking hostages. SWAT teams move in quickly. Nobody wants to Breaking news anything. right now, the polls have it. just closed. The people of Britain deciding if they will go it alone. Our chief foreign correspondent standing by. And America strong tonight. How far will one father go to make sure his son knows he's not alone? This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and we begin tonight with the urgent water rescues now underway. Families trapped in rising waters, an entire community underwater, and now fears that a toddler, a little boy, was swept away. These pictures coming in near Richwood, West Virginia. You can see the shopping center there, water several feet high, cars nearly disappearing. Also tonight, the new number just in, at least 10 confirmed tornadoes, this one touching down in Illinois. Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z with the track as the system now moves into the east. But first, ABC's Alex Perez with the rescue efforts and the state of emergency just declared. Tonight, torrential rains sending a muddy wall of water down a Richwood, West Virginia street. Evacuations underway. The entire town engulfed. Officials declaring a state of emergency. Worries that a nearby dam could breach. They are looking for a four-year-old boy. He was washed away. Reports of a four-year-old child swept away by floodwaters. All part of the same powerful storm that brought hours of fear to the heartland. Just a thin snake coming out of the sky. Truckers forced to pull over in Buckley, Illinois. We gotta get off the highway. Yeah. Big tornado. A storm chaser in the thick of it, pummeled with debris. Multiple confirmed tornadoes, including this EF2 with winds up to 125 miles per hour, tearing an 11 mile path through Pontiac, Illinois. Mary Johnson says this mobile home flipped over three times. Luckily, everyone safe. It could have been so much worse. At Chicago's Soldier Field, 50,000 fans at the Chile versus Columbia soccer match scrambling for cover. And back here in Pontiac, even though the tornado crushed this gas station building, officials say several people who were seeking shelter here were lucky enough to walk away without any serious injuries. David? All right, well, that's good news, but we are thinking about that family and that toddler tonight. Alex, thank you. Let's get right to Ginger because, unfortunately, these next few hours could be very dangerous. Every time I refresh the reports, the storm reports, I'm coming up with something new. So a landslide now on Interstate 79 just north of Charleston is the very latest, and you can see that tornado watch and severe thunderstorm watch that stretch from parts of Kentucky to North Carolina. The flash flooding is the imminent threat for sure, along with those damaging winds and, of course, the isolated tornado that could come out of this. You see the flash flood watch because this area has already had upwards of eight inches of rain. These training thunderstorms, the ones that just keep coming line after line, David, is what we're concerned about tonight. West Virginia finally starts clearing out after midnight, but that's not good for Knoxville all the way to parts of North Carolina. And look, tomorrow the low does the same thing. Another severe weather day. All right, watching it again tomorrow. Ginger, thank you. In the meantime, tonight we turn to a flashpoint reignited in America tonight over this question. Should they stay or should they go? The Supreme Court today blocking the president's plan to allow 5 million undocumented immigrants to get legal status and keep them from being deported. Outside the court, runners with the decision just after it was handed down today, it was summed up in just one sentence from a divided court. Demonstrators on both sides and this boy wearing a shirt reading, don't deport my mom. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump immediately jumping into this with very different views tonight. As the president declared today, Americans will decide this in November. ABC's Jonathan Carl is at the Supreme Court. Yes, yes we can! Yes, we Protests can. over yes, that stinging yes. defeat for the president. The president had tried to provide legal status for millions with the stroke of a pen. 
mostly undocumented immigrants who are the parents of citizens. But the gridlocked Supreme Court said no, leaving in place a lower court ruling that said the president had exceeded the power of his office. The president's reaction? Disappointment. We're going to have to decide whether we're people who accept the cruelty of ripping children from their parents' arms or whether we actually value families and keep them together uh, for the sake of all of our communities. Donald Trump had an entirely different reaction, saying in a statement, Today's 4-4 Supreme Court ruling has blocked one of the most unconstitutional actions ever undertaken by a president. Immigration has been a central campaign theme since day one. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Yeah. Mark my words. Yeah. The contrast with Hillary Clinton couldn't be starker. Her campaign released this video earlier this year of a girl worried about her parents' undocumented status. I'm scared for them because of the deportation. I'm scared that they're going to deportation. Here, come here, bud. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do everything I can so you don't have to be scared. Clinton responded to the ruling in both English and Spanish, saying this decision is a stark reminder of the harm Donald Trump would do to our families, our communities, and our country. And John Carl with us live tonight. Donald Trump reacting today before flying overseas. And John Hillary Clinton responding within minutes after this decision was handed down. David, Hillary Clinton made it clear that if she is elected president within her first 100 days, she will push Congress to enact immigration reform, including a path to citizenship for all those undocumented uh, people in the country right now. Donald Trump, of course, his first act would be to build that wall. And he's also said he would deport all those undocumented people here in the country. All right, major issue this November. John Carl, thanks as always. The other major issue in this presidential campaign worries over terror. And just a week and a half now since Orlando, there was a headline today, a gunman walking into a movie theater in Germany, suddenly taking hostages, SWAT teams moving in. The standoff lasting hours. ABC's Alex Marquardt tonight on how authorities saved everyone in that theater. These were the tense images outside a popular movie theater this afternoon in the small German town of Verheim. Police getting an emergency call that a masked man carrying a long gun had burst into the theater where there were 30 people and barricaded himself with several hostages. He took hostages and a lot of children were inside. Much of the world now on edge. 11 days after the nightclub attack in Orlando, Europe still on high alert after the Paris and Brussels attacks. The first question, could this be another terror attack? The police taking no chances. SWAT teams surrounded and stormed the theater, reportedly firing tear gas. The man uh, deliberately aimed with his weapon at the police forces and they shot him down. Three hours after it started, the gunman was killed. None of the moviegoers were harmed. Tonight, an investigation is underway. The police have said there are no indications of Islamic extremism. Witnesses reported that the young man appeared confused. His motive tonight is still unclear. David. Alex Marquardt, thank you. The headline over that movie theater broke today just as the angry standoff over guns in this country continued inside the Capitol, the unprecedented sit-in. With the House cameras turned off, lawmakers then pulled out their smartphones overnight to show America what was happening on the House floor. Late today, the standoff ended after 25 hours. And so tonight we ask, will there be a vote? ABC's Mary Bruce getting answers. Ten and a half hours into the Democratic protest, chaos erupts. No no the House Speaker tries to restore order. House should be in order. But Democrats vow to stay put until they get that gun control vote. Furious Republicans cut the cameras. Tensions flare, a Republican congressman shouting. Radical Islam! Kill these poor people! Leading the charge for the Democrats, civil rights icon John Lewis. You must never, ever give up or give in or give out. You must keep the 24 hours in, the speaker is fed up. This is Congress, the House of Representatives, oldest democracy in the world and they're just sending it into chaos. Then signs the protest is cracking. Protest. How long is the protest going to last? I think you're going to find out right now. This is only one step down the very long road. Finally, the occupation ends.
And Mary Bruce with us live tonight from Capitol Hill. So Mary, the bottom line for so many Americans who've been watching this since last night, are they any closer now to a vote on guns? David, despite the drama here today, House Democrats are no closer to that vote. In fact, the House is now on recess until after the 4th of July. Now, Republicans say this was nothing more than a publicity stunt because, as they note, all those gun measures have already failed over in the Senate. David. Mary Bruce with us tonight. Mary, thank you. There are new developments from Baltimore tonight. The judge's verdict in the third trial of a police officer charged in the death of Freddie Gray. Officer Caesar Goodson today found not guilty on all counts. He drove the police van in which Gray broke his neck and later died, accused of giving Gray a rough Don't ride before trial. Three officers have now been tried without conviction. ABC's senior national correspondent Jim Amala in Baltimore with reaction now pouring in tonight. Freddie Gray is dying in the back of this police van. His neck snapped during his trek to jail. But today in this Baltimore courthouse, the officer behind the wheel was exonerated not guilty of every charge. The coroner labeled it homicide, but the judge ruled today that Caesar Goodson's actions were not criminal and might have been a mistake. Freddie Gray's family attorney speaking out late today. Yes, this family is enormously frustrated. The reaction on the streets more thoughtful and subdued today than last April, when parts of Baltimore burned and the National Guard had to be brought in. Today, the only thing burning, the prosecution's case. Goodson faced the most serious of the charges against six Baltimore cops. Complaints that Freddie Gray was given a so-called rough ride without a seatbelt, leading to murder and manslaughter. Charges leveled on the courthouse steps by the state's attorney during the middle of efforts to quell a riot. There was a rush to judgment by the government based on an investigation that took less than 30 days. David, three officers remain charged in connection with Gray's death. But today's stunning verdict may have blown away the central core of the prosecution case, and the remaining cops may never reach trial. David? Jim Avila tonight. Jim, thank you. And now to the cliffhanger vote at this hour in the U.K., the so-called Brexit vote. The first results coming in at this hour, the crucial decision on whether Britain will remain part of the European Union. The final decision will almost certainly have an impact on Wall Street here in this country and on the global markets. ABC's chief foreign correspondent, Terry Moran, in London, with what we're learning so far. Tonight, history unfolding as the votes are now being counted in a campaign that's had emotions running at a fever pitch here. No, I can't nobody, shut up. nobody wants to no, listen no, to no, you. They do, no, you nobody don't want to, to listen to me. Nobody mate. Wants the debate's so intense because the stakes are so high. On one side, those for a British exit from Europe, dubbed a Brexit, argue that Britain can regain control of its borders and its economy only by leaving the 28 member European Union. While those for staying in Europe say the UK will be poorer and less safe if it cuts itself off from the free trade and shared security of the EU. And just like in the US, it's immigration and disgust with politics as usual that's driving much of this campaign. All politicians lie, we know that. Polls show the race too close to call, the country split. And I'm voting to remain. I voted out. Families, friends, even husbands and wives divided. In, out. And all kinds of celebrities are weighing in, from Daniel Craig backing the Remain side to Michael Caine and Elizabeth Hurley, who let a Union Jack pillow and nothing else proclaim her support for Brexit. All this could matter a lot to Americans, with some economists warning that if the British vote to get out of the European Union, the turmoil from that could plunge the global economy back into recession, and that would hit every American's 401k and financial future. David? And that's a major concern tonight. Terry Moran live in London. Terry, thank you. Next this evening, new developments tonight in the desperate search for a missing family off Florida's Gulf Coast. A father and his three teenage children boating in rough ways on Sunday. Authorities recovering a second body now today after already finding the body of the teenage daughter. She was wearing a life vest. The Coast Guard also finding more debris in the water, including a sailboat mast. Two sick researchers rescued from the South Pole completing the next leg of their life-saving flight. The two Americans were seen arriving in Chile, carried out on a stretcher here. The rescue plane took off from Antarctica in near total darkness. Wind chill temperatures below 100 degrees. An incredible effort. There is still much more ahead on World News tonight. This Thursday, the mid-air scare in this country. An unruly passenger escorted off a plane. That flight was diverted. Fighter jets had to be scrambled, and we'll tell you why. Also ahead here, a consumer alert, the true cost of your cable. 
New questions tonight over whether you are being overcharged for your cable and are the op